Now he's the host of a show known for pushing architecture and design to its limits. Grand Designs has built up a global cult following over more than a decade and the concept has now come to Australia for a live show. Kevin McLeod is the presenter of Grand Designs. We know many ABC viewers are enormously fond of him and he joins us now in the studio. Kevin uh, McLeod, good morning. They're just outside the doors. They're going to mob you shortly. I, I, I came in the other entrance then, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I, I'm really interested in what you say about just hearing you talk about trolls, because in a way, yes. Grand Designs is a troll-free zone. You know, kind of we, we've from the it very really beginning, yeah. we're kind of been trolled. Yeah, yeah. It was all about celebrating, not not dissing. Really. And and that's uh, clearly part of its of its success, um, because you've got these incredibly optimistic, sometimes one I even might say, blind, foolhardy, foolish. Fool, foolhardy is a good word. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> developers who are are following what? What what is is there a common theme to to the thing that's always driving them to achieve this dream of design? Um, yeah, it's humanity. I mean, that's, that's, that's why we watch, isn't it? Because what these people are doing is, is simply going on the journey that we all think we could go on and, and making the mistakes that we probably would all make. And there is something sort of really fundamental about the drive to protect, to build a little den, to, you know, kind of just try and make the world a better place. My, my little castle and, and my family in it. And, uh, and as you say, such a, a positive um, troll-free zone, a very <laughs> optimistic one. Can I go back in time? How did this whole project come together? What was the genesis of it? Um, it, it happened at a time when, uh, in, in the dim and distant last century, last millennium. Uh, when it, and, you know, television has an extraordinarily short memory. It's like a yes. fish. So, you know, to talk about television in the 1990s is like ancient history. And, uh, oh, and that, that, shush. And that, that, well, I, you know, a few words. <laughs> we remember it. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we just quietly draw a veil over that. But the, the, the interesting time uh, then was that, you know, the, the, all, all, the whole of television was, 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 was consisted of half-hour programmes. And if design was covered, it was covered in makeover programs with MDF and emulsion yeah. paint, you know. And, uh, and so then this idea emerged from a friend of mine who's a producer, and she said, look, you know, how about something where we, we, we do the ultimate makeover, really, which is, mm. is following people poetically building. Has your, your interest level in, in different parts of, of the show and what people are trying to do changed over time? Have you moved from um, uh, being more interested in, in people's stories than what they're actually building? Well, I, you know, right... At the beginning, my, I was uh, I felt like I ought to try and champion the architecture a bit, you know, and the yeah. design process. And I found myself doing that, but alongside that, actually, really championing championing the the stories. And actually, uh, you know, Peter Madison d d does the Australian version here yeah. brilliantly, and and uh, Peter's an architect, and so he, he, he Peter naturally wants to kind of go to the ground plan of the buildings. And we we're doing, for example, a double act uh, uh, this weekend at, at uh, Jeff Jeff Shed, where. Um, it, he sort of talks more about that, and I tend to sort of just stop and just talk about the narratives, the, the people stories, because yeah. for me, in a way, that's, a, a, in the end, the more compelling heart of it, isn't it? And, and it does end up driving the building. I mean, those people's own personalities, what's driving them ends up shaping the building, and, and how could it be any other way, really? Yeah, absolutely. Well, buildings wouldn't exist without people, and, and you know, the whole, the, the architectural process is for individuals, it's for people, so you can't, you can't ever separate the two. But I mean, even, even something that might be a mistake, even an error that might be made, or, or someone advising a builder, and I've seen in the episodes, yeah. you know, from going down a path, but they feel compelled to do that because this building is an expression of them, yeah. and they're just yeah, going yeah, yeah. to make it work Absolutely. anyway. Absolutely, oh, all buildings are. Every building is, and in fact, the best buildings are, are sort of, are, are, are the more compelling expressions of people's, people's personalities. The most bland buildings are the, the expressions of a committee, you know. Um, how do the projects come to you? Do people sort of contact you these days now they, and say, they, we're, we're doing something, please come do. and see? Of course, the people who contact you are the people that you don't necessarily want to film, you know. Um, <laughs> but, but that's just the way of the world. Yep. Uh, and uh, so we have to go out and find, find, the, find the good projects. And, and it's, it's, not, it's not straightforward, yeah. Do you ever um, stop filming at some stage, uh, walk away and have a, have, a, have a cuppa and just think, those people are crazy. There's no way they're going to achieve what they well, want to quite achieve. Quite often, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, amazingly, people do, and it's a constant surprise to me that that humanity kind of pulls itself through. And that, you know, the idea of overspending, for example, is such a typical thing. And we, yeah. we, we would all we would all do it. It's simple as that. So how does your how does it cross over into your live show? Tell us how that's constructed. So, well, it's, we have uh, hundreds of exhibitors. We have uh, lots of events going on. We have an Ask the Expert Centre so people can bring their drawings on the back of a fag packet of, a, you know, something they're fancy building, a loft extension or something, and then they can get free advice. And, uh, and lots of theatre stages as well, but we sort of, you know, act out uh, bits and bobs. Yeah. And for you, for someone who champions the architecture, and, and given that's a big interest of yours, what do you see as the more interesting development now in domestic architecture, given that, and particularly in your well, show... Well, after bifold doors. You know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no, that really big door that just sort of, you know, that huge oh, yeah, one yeah. that went up, yeah. yeah. 
yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah. Then I never the thought we'd lift. The Thunderbirds. Yeah, that's cool. right. yeah. Well, we seem to have gotten away from you know from the steel and glass box and from oh, yeah. you know yeah. nothing ever having any overhang of any kind. What do you see is more interesting at the moment? Uh, you've put me on the spot there, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I have. Uh, well, yeah, okay, steel and glass and concrete, fair enough. I mean, they're all materials, and I suppose actually what I see, if, if anything, is a, a, an appreciation that, that space isn't something that you need to measure simply in square metres. It that doesn't space, have to be huge. No, yeah. it's actually the really well-planned space, storage, mm. uh, makes, can make a really well-designed home, and that can be of enormous pleasure. And it, it, in a way, the, the McMansions, the larger buildings, are, 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 the, are the things that we, we should, yeah other side and, and pursue something a little bit more in, okay, beautifully designed. I am interested to know this though, in domestic architecture in Australia at the moment, bricks are making a very big return. Just, just traditional well, well, bricks. How, how revolutionary is well, that? Well, no, but it, but it is good, no, because they were kicked out for a long time. I mean, look, yeah. you know, you just don't see bricks anymore. You see prefab concrete yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and you see, you know, the construction particle board and the like. Um, are bricks being used uh, more or being returned to in, in UK they, building? They, funnily enough, they are. Uh, although, uh, if you want to see brick, the place to go to is somewhere like Holland or uh, actually, you know, if you're a brick enthusiast, make it the destination of Holland and the Lowlands because they really know how to do brick there better than anybody else on the planet and uh, better than the Brits for sure. Mm. So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, the, uh, brick, uh, glass, glove, glove, handshakes, glass buildings, you know, they're, kind of, they're, they're excuses for buildings, aren't they? Yeah, well, they I mean, are. I'm so yeah. pleased in a way that kind of we, we're, not, we're not kind of making buildings that just reflect other things. And hard to heat and hard to cool. Indeed. <laughs> and very, very briefly, uh, when you're on tour, do you uh, find yourself uh, going off to try and look at interesting architecture oh, or do you well, take a yeah, break? It's a bit of a, just a, bit go to of the a kind of anorak obsession, really. You know? yeah. 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 <laughs> no, for me, it's, uh, I, yeah, I'm a building nerd. Yeah. And so thank goodness for the iPhone. Because I just, want, I just wander on my phone. And I, photograph, I mean, I've stopped using my camera. I just use the phone now just for... I'm going to take hundreds of photographs a day. Well, yep. plenty of good buildings for you to see in Australia. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you, Kevin. Great to be Have here. Have a good tour. Thank you. Thanks so much.